Well, today we have gone through extensive lengths to decide if this truck has got a good enough donor engine to put in that buggy. And we've gone through a bunch of tests. We've checked to see if the compression was there. It is. It leaked the engine down. We checked a bunch of the sensors. Right now, all signs are pointing to the O2 sensor. Matt sits inside the truck. His head glows up with that check engine light. And the guy's telling us that this engine is fat. I think it's starting to all come together. I think there were two other lights in there, too. I think the change engine and check everything light came on. Right? Ch change everything? <laughs> exactly. So that's what we're doing here today. Now, Bosch came up with these oxygen sensors right around 1976 when things were making the transition from carbureted over to fuel injection. So what you would do is you would mount this sensor right there in the collector and it would read the oxygen fuel mixture. Based upon that reading, it would send that information back up to the ECU and that would tell the computer how much fuel to spray out in a nutshell. Well, early on, you'd have one O2 sensor in your collector. You know, these days, stuff has got really sophisticated. In racing applications, I've seen as many as eight, one in each cylinder. Obviously, in production, you're not going to see that, but this truck, for instance, has two, one in either side. But it's got a narrowband O2 sensor versus the newer style wideband O2 sensor, which is kind of taking things to the next level just in sensors. Well, it's interesting. On the narrowband, you get a reading, but basically that reading says, okay, it's off. You know, it's off this way or it's off that way, but there's right. nothing precise about it. And that's where these comes in. With the, with the wideband, it'll tell you, okay, it's, it's off by this, and that's exactly what it is. You know, there's also a heating element inside the wideband O2 sensor. You know, one of the problems with a truck or a car in startup and electronic fuel injection is everything is cold, and that's where you have a rough start, and things don't really start to dial in or tune in until they get to temperature. Well, that same thing can happen with the O2 sensor. It waits until it heats up before it starts giving its information. Otherwise, the engine is cold, and it's compensating for other things other than the tune-up in terms of having a cold engine. So that's where this comes to play, too. And like Matt said, in terms of being precise, an engine like this should run about 14.7 to 1. Well, if your O2 sensor is bad, let's say it's telling you that it's 11.7 to 1, it's telling you you should be going ahead and pulling fuel away to lean it out. Well, it could be giving you bad information and you're going the wrong way. Also, if it's not reading at all, what happens is it goes in what they call open loop, which means it basically shuts down, doesn't give any readings, but a fat tune-up that they put in to keep the engine from burning up. So what I think is going on here is this O2 sensor is not even reading, the engine's running fat, and we are getting a code, and none of that is good. It's like the informant on a crime show, right? If he's given bad information, <laughs> the whole plot is all screwed up. Or so like the we crooked politicians that. where you live. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> all right, so we've pretty much nailed it down to that, and we're pretty confident that when we swap these out, that the engine's going to be fine. So whenever you're going with new O2 sensors, be sure to check out Bosch and you can get them at Federated Auto Works.